Spencer, so um, diving into the game, you know, I always love with you, we have a former offensive lineman talking about a Tennessee program that is supposed to be the high flying, score a lot of points, entertainment type of program under Josh Heupel. But they won a game on Saturday the type, the, the way y'all's teams would win back in the 90s, it felt like just out manhandling their opponents on the line of scrimmage. Sure. Uh, Did I mean, you see that coming from this team? Well, Josh Hopper wants to run the football, guys. Let's just call it how it is. Everybody has this perception. He wants to throw it all over the barnyard, and uh, he don't care to do that, but he would prefer to run the football. Um, you know, if you want to win a national championship and win an SEC title, uh, you've got to be able to run the football, and you got to be able to stop the run. Uh, that has been – it's a tried and true uh, method of success. Um, you know what I mean? So – uh, I really thought that they did a great job up front. Uh, I thought they, 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 I, th I think that the left guard spots kind of solidified uh, to me a little bit more uh, after watching it. I thought it was a very physical football game on their part, on Tennessee's part. Um, you know what I mean? So uh, it was definitely a, um, a, a fun ball game to watch um, from my, my, my standpoint from it. You know what I mean? I'd like to see us, uh, you know, they, they, they play a, a little gimmicky cop defense in the three three stack and they bring a lot of pressure and you know, I mean something that you don't see all the time. Um, you know, which can can give you some confusions on who you got, where you gotta slide to, who who who's coming, who's got this guy when and they bring multiple backers from different areas and it can kind of give you some problems. And I thought there was a little bit of communication issues on that point of it. Uh, but, you know, overall, I thought it was a good, foot, solid football game for him offensively. Uh, Rodney Garner's got those uh, dogs up front hunting. Oh, yeah, and, and Spencer, you, I know you faced it in practice. I'm sure you faced it against a teams, uh, other teams you played. But when a team can bring in defensive tackles in waves and every coach starts the year saying we'd like you know, 12 um, defensive linemen that could play, well, that's not always the case and rarely is. But it does feel like Tennessee has six defensive tackles that can play. How much more challenging is that from an offensive line standpoint? I mean, especially in long drives, you know what I mean? It gets really, really challenging for you because there's a fresh body coming in. You know what I mean? You're kind of kind of a little tired from the long drive. And, and, and we don't have a ton of long drives. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? We score from distance and, and, and we don't – we, we but we can go down and have a 15 play drive but we also also can score from distance and you know what i mean it, it, it's 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 definitely a challenge for the offense line because you know you're going to you're going to get a fresh body different type of player than who you were playing against the previous snaps and you just got to know who your personnel is when they come in the ball game Spencer, um, on the other side you know we did our work hard right before you came on and i was grading the secondary and i thought the secondary played well but i got to ask is it really – could you really even judge the secondary? Because how easy is it to play in the secondary when your defensive line plays that well <laughs> in a game the way well, Tennessee plays? I will say this. The best the best coverage is a great pass rush. Let's just yeah. call it how it is. You don't got to cover a long time if they're getting back there at the quarterback, getting quarterback off his spot. You know what I mean? It makes a young secondary better for sure. And I say young, I, just, I mean, I, there's still questions in that secondary for sure for me. Uh, as I was getting ready to come on here, I mean, that's probably still my biggest concern um, on, at, at, on the defensive side of the ball. Yep. I think that's I think that's fair. And I wonder at what point that they'll be tested because, you know, you're going to be three games deep into the uh, Kent, with Kent State. And really, I don't know that they've been tested. Have you ever been in a situation in which – a part of your team two or three games into the season, you still have some question marks about. Not as coaching, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, from a playing standpoint, you know what I mean? You, you go into ball games and you know you should win and you're young and you're trying, trying to figure out, all right, so what's going to happen when the freaking – the heavy bullets and the artillery shells start flying instead of the little pea shooters, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. When the haymakers start rolling in. Um so, not really, but as a as a player, you definitely you're it's still in the back of your mind, and everybody knows, hey, we got to go out and perform uh, when it counts versus the big dogs. 
Yeah, it's um, what do you read uh, stock into the Spencer from the sense of Tennessee dominating the line of scrimmage? And I think uh, I think every Tennessee fan felt a nice little bit of nostalgia seeing that. Could that be indicative of Tennessee this year? Or do you say, well, they were a top 25 team, but at the end of the day, they're NC State. They're not the type of lines they're going to see in the SEC. Well, they are the ACC, so it gives you enough. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't – you're not playing – I mean, and, and SC, ACC's got some good football teams. But NC State, they're probably three or four in their conference maybe. You know what I mean? They, at best. Uh, you know what I mean? So, I don't know the the – they, they're supposed to have, what, the second most starts in college football on the offensive line play? Uh, did yeah. I hear that right? Yeah. Yeah, four or uh, five graduate transfers. That ain't good. Starters. That ain't good for them. No, uh, and that's – wow. That, you, know I mean? you know, I hadn't even thought about that. They mentioned it on the, the, the telecast. To me, that's just purely a difference in talent level. Is it that simple, Spencer? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's in. I mean, your University of Tennessee—that's NC State. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're not out. North, North Carolina is supposed to be a better football team than NC State, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're not even their best in their area in North Carolina. So, I mean, I take it as you want. I just call it call it how I see it. You know what I mean? I, they're 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 a quality ball club. They'll they'll be a top twenty. You know, they'll they'll continue to win football games throughout the year in the ACC and. You know what I mean? If may have a chance to slide in there, but at the end of the day, uh, it's not going to be playing in the SEC. It's not like playing an SEC schedule. Because I haven't looked at the, the polls, but how many, how many teams in the SEC are ranked in the top 25? I think there's like six now, six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. And how, I, many, how many do we play? Uh, Georgia, Georgia, Oklahoma, um, Alabama. Missouri. No, Tennessee doesn't play Missouri this year. Missouri, excuse me. Um, Arkansas. Well, Arkansas, but I don't think they're in the top twenty-five. I didn't know. So, so I mean, come on now, guys. Let's, let's call it how it is. When it, they don't, I, and, the, and the ACC has how many? Uh, Miami. Miami. Oh, Miami. Or, yeah, I'm sorry, they are in it. Sorry. Yeah, Miami, but Florida State's dropped out. Um, Clemson's still in it. Clemson's still in it. Clemson. <laughs> Two. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't think this is a good time to buy stock in the ACC. Um, no. I want to uh, – let me ask you Don't about drink this. the water, you know what I mean, what I would say in that part of it. You know, when you asked about the physicality and the dominance of the offensive line play and defensive line play, we did what we were supposed to do, right? Um, let's see if we can do that versus the Oklahomas and the uh, the, the Georgias and, and, you know, the Alabamas. Um see if we can do that versus those guys or you know i mean you don't have to be dominant i mean you just got to be able to perform and execute at a high level and be good you know what i mean because if you're good they're good it's going to be a hell of a football game that's well put um i want to ask you about schematically we saw a lot of double tight ends and we've seen almost two different looking offenses at times including the key players dante thornton was the go-to guy in game one, and it was the tight ends uh, oftentimes. And Squirrel White looked to be a big part of the game plan, even though uh, there were some misconnections. I remind you that Spencer's appearance, coincidentally brought to you by Don Self State Farm. Customer service still matters. For 40 years, they built their business on taking care of their customers. The greater Chattanooga area, call 423-396-2126 or go to donself.net. I know you're a big Don Self guy there, Spencer. Talked to him last week. Nice. I take care of business, so took care of me. Matter of freaking thirty minutes, I'm done, handled. So he texted me back, said, "Hey, it's done and handled." I said, "Thanks, appreciate it." So nice. I mean, that's, that's how you do business with Don Self. Nice. How difficult is it to have a much def- a different approach on offense from one game? to another to to lean more on two tight ends than you did in week one can you just talk about that coaching challenge sure no i don't think so not at all i mean for us for any for an offense coach now you always got two tight ends you always have two tight ends in your package you always have if you've got three you have three tight ends you know but everybody always has those personnel groupings right you know you heard me talk about uh nc state plays three three stack 
Well, three three stack eights, two tight ends. Gotcha. Get All them right. out of the one what they want to do. It gotcha. makes you balanced. Uh, you know, I mean, you added you added a gap for run scheme, right? Uh, so now they got to add an extra person to the line of scrimmage, closer get a couple of guys closer to the box. That's why they started playing more man coverage on the outside. Uh, you know, what I mean, so it, it's 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 a twofold sword, right? You know, if you're going to get somebody who plays a bunch of spread, four four receivers and trips to one side, two two by two or or trips to one side, you know, what I mean, it, it's it's easy to be able to manipulate your defense in a three three stack to be able to create pressure and and do that, um, you know. But when you decide you're going to get in there and you're going to make it an ugly contest of of hey the physicality of we're going to be too tight and we're just going to pound you, um, it's kind of hard. Makes sense. Um, Tennessee will have Kent State, and then they'll play Oklahoma. Let me let me ask you a question from kind of the opposite perspective. They can show what they want against Kent State. Now we've we've seen that they can run two tights at a high level. We've seen in week one that their offense can run at a high level without two tight ends. With Kent State, I don't know what they're going to do. But as if you're Oklahoma. How much more difficult is it in that game upcoming to prepare for a team that has shown so many things offensively? I think we line up and run the wishbone at them. <laughs> oh, I mean, Kent, State's so, Kent State's so bad. I mean, so I yes, mean, <laughs> they're the. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. They're not last in the in the in, in the. In the well, no, I mean, <laughs> are they not ranked last? Spencer, it's funny you say this because I actually said at the start of the year, everybody thinks the FCS foes are your easiest school. I said, guys, Kent State's easier than Chattanooga. They're worse than Chattanooga is. Oh, um, yeah. They are a horrible They've won one ball guys. game in two years, right? I think that's it. Yeah. And I hate talking bad about people because of the head coach, right? I don't want, I mean, I don't like doing that because, I, hell, I don't want the shoe to be on my foot either, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, but, you know what I mean? They're not very good. Well, their coach did say at one point that he doesn't like to. Um, he said he, he said he doesn't like to analyze plays at one point last year. So you know, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm gonna it's... give him bubbles. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spence, you got uh, Dobbins Bennett on the road this weekend. Uh, best of luck. And uh, we we always appreciate your time. The insight uh, means a lot. I appreciate, appreciate you, buddy. All right, I got a question for you too. Wait on me. Um, what's, what's how many how many points are we gonna score this weekend? Do we cover? Do we cover? And how many points do we score? Have you seen Actually, the spread what? yet, Caleb? It's forty Pulling something. Now. It was forty something last time I looked. I think Josh High forty seven and a half point favorite with the over under wow. sixty two and a half. I think Josh Heupel likes points. I think he likes numbers. And I think you would like for Nico to get some Heisman consideration. All this is not traditional coaching, Spencer. Not how you and I might 100%. Think. I agree with what you're saying. I okay. have a opinion, so I'll just tell you. I want to hear what y'all are going to say. First. Okay. So, yes, I think you'll make sure and cover and make Nico look good. You? What's the score? What's the, what's, your, what, how many, what's the points we score? Um, I'm going to say uh, 63. Come on, Caleb. Let's go. I'm gonna go. I think they. I think they finally crossed the 70 point threshold. I'm gonna go I, 75. That's what I said. You're on, <laughs> your own point here, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have. I'm, I'm team. I'm, they, I think they hit. I think they get into the 70s. Spencer's right. Uh, Guys, I, I, I feel I, sorry I, for. I feel sorry for Kent State. Let's just be honest. I hate it. I, you know, what I mean, we're giving them a good paycheck, run their athletic department for a year or two. You know, what I mean, so. Bless them. Yeah. Great trip. Enjoy it. That, it Take your money and go back. Go back. They up, are the worst team. In, they are the worst team in FBS. Football. Spencer they're, they're almost said, bad. Spencer almost said one of my favorite Southern sayings. Bless your heart. Which basically. <laughs> bless their heart. I mean, so which is when they say it. Which exact, which is kind of like uh, saying you're not very good, but, you know. Bless your heart. Yeah, bless your heart. I'm hey, sorry, so you're terrible. I'm gonna probably gonna I'm only probably gonna watch the first half. Just gonna let y'all know. So next week you're gonna have to carry me a little bit more. I understand. Thank you, Spencer. I appreciate you. Have a uh, fantastic week. Go beat Dobbins Bennett. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Y'all have a blessed day.